Hi, everybody. We're going to give everyone a few seconds to be able to come on into the live. I'll give you an example. Today, this is what we're going to be making. So we're going to be making a really fun craft. So I just thought I'd show you that while we're waiting everyone to be able to log on. So let's see. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Morgan, and I wanted to welcome you all back to Get Your Play Online. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're so glad to have you here. I'm really glad you've all made it back. This is week four of our eight-week summer programming, and this week is all about community helpers. So you may be wondering what a community helper might be, and the answer to that is there's a lot of different examples. Let's see, community helpers may be doctors or nurses, which is what we're going to be focusing on today during our science craft. Um, but there's lots of other community helpers, like police officers, firefighters, paramedics, and all sorts of people that work together to keep you and I safe. So today, we are going to learn all about x-rays. So I'm going to get this a little bit closer, and as you can see, I made an x-ray replica of my hand. So today we're going to walk through what an x-ray is, how an x-ray may be taken, some reasons why you may need an x-ray, and some things that may be done after you get an x-ray to help your body heal and feel as good as it can. So today it's going to be a little different if you've tuned into my other science um, experiment lives. You may know that we like to focus on what a hypothesis is and how to make a hypothesis, but today it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing a craft instead of an experiment, so today I don't have any hypotheses. But that doesn't mean there's not things we can be thinking about while we're doing our crafts, and I want to encourage you all to be able to um, think about what we're learning about today and ask questions. You can leave a comment, uh, anything like that, and we'd be happy to respond to you. So if you have watched one of my lives before, you do like to, you do know that I like to start with a joke because I think jokes are really fun. So I thought I would find a joke about a skeleton today since we're talking about bones and x-rays. So I'm going to go ahead and read that to you now. What does a skeleton chef says? Oh, sorry. What does a skeleton chef say when he serves you a meal? Does anyone have any ideas? You can always leave your answers in the comments for us. The answer to that is bon appetit. So I thought that would be a fun way to start our segment today. So let's see. I think we're going to start by doing our craft. And then we can show some more examples, including what an x-ray may sound like what an x-ray may look like, and all of that. So if you ever end up in a hospital, that part might not be so scary. You'll know what to expect, and you may have seen some of the things that you'll experience. So let's see, I have my supply list right here. For our craft today, where it's going to be pretty simple, we need construction paper, glue or tape. So whichever one you have will work for this uh, project, no problem. Some Q-tips, and a white crayon or colored pencil. I have a crayon today. So... Let's go ahead and show you each one of our supplies. So our first supply is just some regular black construction paper. You can use other colors, but the black will show up a little bit better when we use our white crayon and make it look a little bit more like an x-ray. Our next one is going to be glue or tape. I decided to bring both. I always like to have choices in case when I'm doing my experiment, things aren't working as well as I want, so I can always change and have a second option. I think I'm going to try the glue first, and if the glue doesn't work, I'm going to use the tape. In my example, I did use glue and it did work pretty well, so that's probably what I'll stick with today. And then next is Q-tips. I brought lots of Q-tips because we may need more than one to do our project. So I just have them here in a little bowl, just like that, and we're going to grab from them throughout the video. And last is a white crayon. I used one of these twistable crayons, but any crayon should work, and it should show up really well on the black paper. So before we start that, I was wondering if any of our viewers have ever seen an x-ray, maybe had an x-ray, maybe a sibling or your mom or dad had an x-ray, and I was wondering if you ever had the chance to see what it looks like. So I actually have some x-rays that I had done many, many, many years ago that my mom actually kept and she showed me while I was getting ready to do this live and I actually brought them to see if we could check them out on the live. So I'm going to hold them up here. The first one is a foot x-ray. So you can see this is what an x-ray kind of looks like after it's taken. Now it may just look like a weird piece of paper with some black colors. But when we take a closer look, I'm going to hold this piece of white paper up behind it to see if we can see it a little bit better. You may be able to see, mm, let's see, maybe not. Let's try holding it up. Go, um, so let's see. You can see a foot x-ray right here. Oh, right here. So this is a picture of my foot when I was a baby. 
I know, it's pretty cool. Let's see if we can see some of our other ones a little bit better. This is another foot x-ray. Let's see, you can't quite see it too well outside. Let me hold it up here. No, nope, no, nope. it doesn't look like it's going to show up for us, but that's okay because I actually brought some other pictures on my iPad that we should be able to see a lot better. So, I think we should start our craft. And then once we have our craft, we can compare it to the x-ray that I have on the iPad. I think that's a great idea. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your black piece of construction paper and you're going to trace your hand. I think I'm going to trace my left hand since I'm right-handed. It'll make it a little bit easier for me to draw. So let's see, I'm going to try to move the camera so you all can see what's going on. All right. So just like that, you're going to put your piece of paper on a nice flat surface. And then I'm going to tilt it just a little bit and put your hand down nice and flat, just like that. I might move it up a little bit. Let's see, now you can see that. So I'm going to shift it up just a little bit. And then carefully with my crayon, I'm going to just trace around my fingers around my fingers just like this and this is going to give us an outline to work from during our craft so just like that you can do your left hand you can do your right hand you can ask a grown-up for help if you need it or maybe a friend that lives with you or a sibling anyone can help you out or you can do it all by yourself it's totally up to you so now that we have this part done we're going to use our q-tips to represent our bones. So as we glue them, I'm going to be sharing some really funny sounding names about what these bones may be. Some words like carpals and phalanges and radius and ulna, and I know those words sound really silly and hard to pronounce, but I'll walk you through them and you'll realize that they may not be so silly sounding once you realize what they stand for. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our q-tips along our fingers first. Now, if your hand is smaller, you may have to break your Q-tips in half, and it's pretty easy. You just twist, and they'll come right apart. So you don't even need scissors, and that makes it a little bit safer. So let's see. We're going to put, we're going to need five finger bones. Just like, well, that one has a little bit of fluff on the end. Just like that. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And finger bones are actually called phalanges. I know, it's a very silly sounding word, and it's pretty fun to say. I think you all should try it. But these five bones are the phalange bones. So what we're going to do, because I'm going to use some glue, and we're going to just put some glue on the finger, and then put that Q-tip back in, and just like that, put all five of our fingers on our paper. So, just like that. And one more for the thumb bone. And that looks perfect. So we have our thumb bone, our index finger, our middle finger, our ring finger, and our pinky finger. So five phalange bones. Next thing we're going to put on is the radius and the ulna. And these are the bones in your arm. So you have one on each side, and one's a little bit thicker than the other. But today we're just going to use the same size Q-tips to represent the bones. So they are going to come up down towards the bottom of your arm right underneath your wrist. So if you feel this portion of your arm, you're going to feel two long hard bones and that's going to be your radius bone and your ulna bone. So same thing, we're going to go ahead and put some glue down here at the bottom to secure these bones onto our craft. I'm going to actually break these in half so they're not poking off the side of my paper. Just like that. Break it in half. And there we go. So we have our radius and our ulna bone kind of poking out there at the bottom. So the next things we need to make are our metacarpal bones. So the metacarpal bones are sometimes called your wrist bones. And so these are going to be down here at the bottom, just like this. We're going to have one, two, three, four, you will have five. I need to break one more in half. Right size, just like that. Perfect. So we're going to have five of our uh, metacarpals. So we're actually going to slide the metacarpals up a little bit higher because we do have one more set of bones down at the end. So just like that. 
So now our metacarpals are right where they need to be. Make our thumb one a little shorter so it fits a little bit better. Perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and glue those down. Just like that. Metacarpals. Metacarpal. And if you're doing this at home and your hand's not quite as long, you can make your Q-tip shorter, or you can only put some of the bones. It's totally up to you. I've done this craft where you maybe you skip the metacarpal part and you only have your phalanges and your radius and your ulna. That's totally fine. Whatever you need to do to make your craft work for you, you are welcome to do. So lastly, so let's see, we have our five phalanges, and then we have our metacarpals. And then the last ones are going to be the carpals. We ran out of room, so we'll only put three, but your metacarpals sit above your carpals. So that's a good way to remember it. And that is sometimes called your wrist bones. So there's lots of different wrist bones. So if you've ever had an accident and maybe broke your wrist, you might have broken one of your metacarpal bones or your carpal bones. So you, you could ask maybe mom or dad if they know what happened so you can learn more about what happened. Let's see, so we're going to glue those last two in there, just like that. Perfect. That looks really good. Now, what I did on my example is I labeled them so that I could remember what they were called. So the way I did this is I blocked off the different parts so I could remember. So the fingers, which are right here, are the... That's right, those are the phalanges. And after the phalanges come what? That's right, the metacarpals. And after the metacarpals, we have the carpals. That's right. And then last, we have the radius and the ulna. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over, and I'm going to label it just on the side so I can remember. So phalanges, P, H, A, L, A, N, G, E, S. And after the phalanges come the metacarpals. So I'm going to write that in two words. M-E-T-A-C-A-R-P-A-L-S. And lastly, the carpals. C-A-R-P-A-L-S. And after that, I want to label my radius. Your radius is the bone on the side of your thumb, which I like to remember. If you kind of curl up your thumb, it looks a little bit like an R. That's how I remember the radius is going to be on the side of your thumb, and your ulna is going to be on the side of your pinky finger. So let's see. We have our radius, R-A-D-I-U-S, bone, B-O-N-E, and our ulna bone. So I'm going to draw a little arrow so I remember what I'm referring to. So let's see. This is our finished skeleton hand. So we have our phalanges right here, then our metacarpals, and then our carpals. And then we have our ulna bone and our radius bone. So now that we've made our very own skeleton hand, I think we should take a look at an actual x-ray of the hand to see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and open my iPad. I have some pictures saved. So let's see. So we can learn about what an x-ray looks like and what an x-ray machine may look like. So if you ever go to the hospital and a doctor lets you know that you need to have an x-ray, now you have a little bit better of an understanding of what it looks like. So let's see. Here is an x-ray of a hand. So let's see. Let's go through the different parts. We have our phalanges right here. So those are the finger bones. You can see that there's three phalanges in every finger. These long bones right here, I'll use the end of my... These long bones right here are our metacarpals. And these small stone or pebble-like bones right here, those are our carpals. And you see how the two bones down here are a little bit bigger? So those are our radius bone and our ulna bone. So remember, our radius bone is on the side of our thumb. So right here is our radius bone, and right here is our ulna bone. So let's hold these up and we can compare them. Uh-oh, looks like one of my metacarpals tried to sneak away. Let's put that right back on there. No worries. So I think we did a really great job making our very own hand. What about you? 
So this is a really great opportunity for you to learn more about your body. And now that I taught it to you, you can go teach it to somebody else. And that's the really fun part about learning and about doing science is that you can teach others what you're learning about. So like I touched on earlier, if you ever visit a hospital, a doctor may tell you you need to have an x-ray. And you may be wondering, I don't know what that looks like. You may hear it referred to as a big camera because it's able to take a picture inside of your body without even touching you. And I've had lots of x-rays before and I don't think they hurt at all. Uh, there is a little bit of a sound and we're going to cover that later, but other than that, you can't even tell it's happening. You get to go into a special room and you may wear a special uh, heavy blanket and that's a way of protecting your body from the x-ray. So it also makes sure that the x-ray only takes pictures of the part the doctor is interested in looking at. So it's pretty cool. This is what an x-ray machine may look like. So you would have the opportunity to lie down on the table right here and this is the special camera that takes your picture. And so a doctor or a nurse or someone called a technician can move this camera around to make sure it's looking at just the right part of your body and take a picture and it's it's pretty simple and you can see this one over here you may stand up against it if a doctor needs to take a picture of maybe your back or your lungs and you can just stand while the x-ray is being taken so i think next we should cover maybe what an x-ray sounds like so i think it sounds a little silly but it's a very quick sound, and like I said, it doesn't hurt. So, I don't know. I want you to tell me what you think it sounds like after you hear it. So I'm going to go ahead and play it from my iPad and hope everybody can hear it. There's going to be a few different sounds played about over about 30 seconds, and some x-rays will sound a little bit different than others, so this is a great way of learning more about what different x-rays may sound like. So let's see. So it sounds like a buzzer from a game show. Let's see. Let's sounds a little bit deeper. See, I think that one sounds like a buzzer too. That one almost sounds like a high-pitched lawnmower. Hmm. And that one sounds like the end of a basketball game. So those are just a few different sounds that you may hear if you ever have an x-ray. Like I said, it doesn't hurt. It can be a little scary, but if you're ever feeling scared when you're at a hospital, you can look for your community helpers. So there would be nurses, technicians, or doctors, and they're going to be happy to be able to answer your questions and to help you if you ever need it. And so never be afraid to ask questions while you're at the doctor or at the hospital. All the people there are there to help you and to make sure you stay as comfortable as possible. So let's see. We talked about the different bones in the hand. We tried to show, show some x-rays that didn't quite work, but that's okay. So we saw them on our iPad. We listened to some sounds, and we made a really cool craft and labeled all of our bones, which is super cool. Get another zoomed-in shot of that. I think we did an awesome job on that. So you may be wondering, I go to the doctor because I hurt a part of my body and I got an x-ray. What happens next? Lots of things can happen, and your community helper, your doctor or nurse, can let you know more about what they need to do to help your body heal. So if you break your bone, or there's a, something called a fracture, which is a fancy way of saying a break, you may have to wear something called a brace or a cast, and that helps your body to stay nice and still while it's healing. If you move a broken bone a lot while it's healing, it's not going to heal quite right and it might hurt a lot. So to help you feel more comfortable, the doctor may put you in a special tool called a brace or a cast, and it will help the bone heal and feel more comfortable. I actually brought some lots of examples of what a brace may look like so that you can see what they um, what you may experience if you end up ever hurting yourself and needing one so let's see this is a wrist brace so it slides on it's very soft and very comfortable and it would help hold your wrist nice and still let's see I can go ahead and put it on and give you an example so there's just some velcro on the outside you just open it up just like this and you can slide your arm right inside and then very carefully, you can put the Velcro back on just like that. Slide it through. And it holds your wrist in a nice uh, stable position. So I can't bend my wrist, I can only wiggle my fingers, but it feels very comfortable. It almost feels like my arm is getting a hug. So I'll go ahead and take that off and we can look at the next brace that I brought. So let's see, this is called a special shoe. So as you can see, similar to the last one, it opens up using Velcro and your foot can go right inside and it holds your toes or your foot nice and still. So if you ever broke maybe one of your toe bones or you had 
um, a surgery to help something in your foot, you may wear a special shoe like this. Just like the last one, it's very soft and very comfortable and it's very hard. So let's see, we can't bend it and it's going to hold those bones into a nice comfortable spot so that they're not wiggling around. Let's see, the next one is if you ever hurt your knee. So this is a longer brace and it goes on your knee and it sits. So you slide your knee right inside, see just like that, and the different straps will hold your knee in place. Now your knee can still bend in the brace, and it also the brace can also lock. This can help a doctor help maybe things that aren't bones feel better. So if you ever hurt something called a ligament or a tendon, you may have to wear a brace like this. And so this still lets you bend and move, and it's pretty comfortable, I have to say. I've worn it for a little while. Next, let's see, if you broke your foot or your ankle, like I said, you may wear a boot like this, or you may wear a boot like this. The boot's a little bit higher and it has a little bit more protection, and it opens the same way, just with the Velcro, and your foot slides right inside, and it looks just like a shoe from the bottom. It just looks like a silly, I like to call this my astronaut foot. So I wore this for a little while, and when I wore it, I felt like an astronaut. It was pretty cool and very comfortable, I have to say. Lastly, if you break your ankle or your leg, you may wear a boot like this. So the same idea, lots of Velcro and a very soft liner on the inside. And this holds your foot in the right position and still lets you walk on it. So there may be breaks where you're not allowed to walk on it. And in that case, you would get something called a cast. And a cast is a special, very soft bandage that gets put around your arm or your leg and then wrapped with a very special tape that gets warm when you put it in water, which allows the doctor to put it around the part of your body that's injured and then it will feel a little warm and then it will be nice and hard. And so you'll keep that on for as long as your doctor tells you. And then after it comes off, you may go into a brace. There's lots of different options. So if you ever are feeling nervous about having to go to the hospital because you maybe hurt your arm or your leg, we've now covered a lot of the things that you may expect. So and also remember, everyone at the hospital is there to help you and they're very kind and very helpful and they are happy to answer any of your questions. So never be afraid to speak up and have your questions answered. You can also ask mom or dad or another grown up that takes you to the hospital if you have any questions and they can help get those que questions answered too. So I'm so glad you all tuned in and I'm so glad we had an opportunity to make this really cool skeleton hand. And I'm glad we got to learn more about x-ray machines and x-rays and all sorts of different things you may wear on your body to help, uh, help you heal if you ever have an injury or an accident. So thank you all so much for tuning in to get your play online. We're so glad you're here. We're so glad that you're tuning in every week and you're liking our videos and giving us comments. We're so happy to see that people are enjoying the videos and we really hope you come back next week for week five of our summer programming because we're gonna have another really awesome theme thank you all so much for tuning in we'll see you next week